Hey guys, Crystal here from Elite Hair Care USA. So we are doing a quick video on how to add tracks to the front of your hair to give a little bit more emphasis to your bangs. So I started off by shampooing and conditioning my hair using our Hydra Strength shampoo and conditioner. And I also used our Silky Leave-In Conditioner. And then I molded my hair and used our Elite Silk Wrap Foam. So today I'm using some leftover hair that I had in my draw. Um, I can't even remember what brand of hair this is, but it is a 10 inch. Um, and I think this will be considered more like almost half a pack. So as you guys know, I did put some color in front of my hair. Um, and I had a lace front on. So that's where I was showing you guys that little light dried out area. Uh, I don't think I'll be putting another lace front on for a little bit. Uh, I, just, I don't know. I like my hair. Okay. So I started out by going up about an inch to an inch and a half away from my face. That area is a little bit tender from me having the lace front. So I wanted to start a little bit further back. Now, this is something you can do by choice, but I don't recommend starting um, anywhere within that half inch area of the face. That area is typically the area that will be very tender if you put tracks there. And that area is the area where the tracks will slip extremely quickly because you'll start to perspire. So I put my tracks directly in the part um, of where I parted out my, well, I parted between my hair. There we go. Um, and I'm using the 30 second glue to actually add the tracks to my hair. Once I put the track on, I use the blow dryer just to kind of blow dry it really quick so I can secure it. And then I move on. Now, most people want this extreme bang. I want mine to look more like my hair. So I try not to put too many tracks in. Um, this is just to add a little bit of emphasis to the face. Now, if you want a full feathered bang, then of course your tracks can be closer together. But I did not want that dramatic feather. Like I said, I just wanted it to look as natural as possible and just to add a little bit more um, density to my front as well as a little bit more length. Now, what you see me doing with my flat iron is I am basically taking the crimp out of the track and making the track nice and straight so that I don't have any type of lumping or humping. That is something that you can do when you're installing your tracks because if you don't, then you sometimes will have that little lip or little bump when you go to comb through your hair, that kind of thing. So it just gives you a nice smooth foundation. And it also sets the tone for when you put your glue on. It also helps the glue to start to dry a little bit faster as well. Now, if you notice between track one and track two, I already have a good amount of coverage. So this is why I tell people that you don't need a ton of tracks when you're putting the tracks in between your hair. You really just wanna go with the flow and just watch how much coverage you have as you go along, okay? The, the common mistake that people make is they put the tracks too close together. And remember, this is glue, guys, that you're putting in between the part. So if you are putting tracks together, one after the other, eventually that glue starts to get on your hair. So I like to space them out at least half an inch apart to even an inch apart, just depending on the actual style. Now, as I lay the tracks, I usually comb them in the direction that I'm going to style it just to see my coverage to see if I need to go back and add any anywhere else. And I don't always go all the way to the top or the middle of my head because I want it to appear as if it was my hair. So this is something that I also recommend. Now, if you're doing something where you're doing like a, a Fantasia bang or something of that nature, then of course you're going to use more tracks. But at that point, I would more say visit trying to just cover the entire top instead of adding the tracks in between because it might be too much at that time. Now, for my actual tracks, I like to cut them as I go unless I know that I'm using the same length in both parts. Don't pre-cut your tracks because you never know how much you're going to use. And as you get closer to the top of your head or the middle part of your head, you'll notice that your tracks don't need to be as long as they were when you were in the front of the face, okay? So the key to it is you want it to blend in, you want to cover, um, or you want good coverage, and then you also wanna make sure that you have good coverage in your parts. So I feel like this was full enough for me, 
Um, of course, it's really your choice, as I said. And then from there, it's it's easy peasy. Yay, I love my bangs. <laughs> But guys, also, don't forget, if you're new to my channel, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And for all your hair care, hair restoration, and hair regrowth needs, please visit EliteHairCareUSA.com and see some of my products. Also, if you're not following me on Instagram or TikTok, please go and follow me at EliteHairCareUSA. Now, I'm using a razor comb to cut the um, the hair down or or... Cut the, yeah, cut the hair down. Um, I don't use my shears more say for these types of styles because I want it to be nice and jagged as though it was my natural hair. Now you do want to make sure that you're not cutting your hair when you are doing this. Um, and this is an easier way to do it, especially for those of you that do not know how to cut with the shears. When you use the razor, it, it just kind of is more like you're, you're just kind of creating some jagged lines, lift the hair up and then move forward. So it's not, this doesn't really take rocket science to do with the razor. I wouldn't really overthink it. You just want to make sure that you are blending. I had to yawn. <laughs> that you are blending your hair with the tracks. And you don't want the tracks to be short. You don't want the tracks to be the same length as your hair. So you do want to make sure that they are a little bit longer than your hair, especially if you're trying to create a bang, you guys. Now for my curling, I did not touch the sides or the back of my hair. All I did was curl where I had the tracks and my hair in the crown. That's it. Now, if you wanted a lot of emphasis in your curls, that kind of thing, then you can definitely curl the rest. But I wanted mine to be nice and flat because I want my attention to be on my bangs. And then for my sides and my back, it's going to be flat anyway. And I did an amazing mold. So I did not have to even worry about curling that area. But that is by choice. That is not a requirement. That is not a stipulation of this style. That is all by choice. This is a really quick style for me to do. I can do this style in about 20 to 30 minutes and remove the, um, the need to curl my entire head and just add a little bit of style towards me and I'm out. So this is a quick style that you can do when you're on the go. Now, what I did notice is I curled a little bit too tight and I also noticed that I needed to take some of the length off of a certain area. So all I did was go through, take my shears and just cut off that little piece of banging or curling. And that brought the hair in the direction that I actually wanted it to go. Now, guys, I know a lot of you, like I said, want a lot of density, a lot of coverage. This is not the style for that. This is a style where you just want just a slight amount of emphasis towards the face and you want it to appear as if it was your hair and you just got a wash in style. And that was what I was going for. Even though I have color, it blended in really, really well. And I feel like it came out great.